welcome to Babs Arcade again and today we're going to be looking at joysticks and joypads that you can connect to Spectrum Next They can play all those games that you've got. See you in a bit. Right so let's have a look at what control methods we can use on the Spectrum Next. The Wiimote, Sega Mega Drive pad, PlayStation 4 pad, the Zip Stick, Xbox S pad, we've got some Quick Shot 2s, and we've also got a PS2 keyboard. And I'm going to try out this bad boy, which is a arcade joystick for the Wii from the uh, Tatsunoki vs Capcom game. So the first thing we'll do is we will try out the Mega Drive pad. We'll turn off the next. And we're plugging into Joy 1. For the test we will have a game of Night Night. Now one thing to keep in mind is a lot of the new games now are using multiple buttons. So the Mega Drive pad is ideal for this because you've got your three action buttons, A, B and C, and you've also got a start button. So this particular game, you've literally just got one button for jump. drive pad no issues at all very responsive so that's the first pad so secondly we will try a good old-fashioned quick shot joystick now one thing to mention if we press space bar to enter the spectrum next settings for space to edit you've got a number of options in here you've got uh, control over the ps2 connector on the back you've also got some mouse options and you've also got some joystick options here so you've got Kempston 1 um, space to change you can map the key map to the joystick to keys 5, 6, 7, 8 and 0 you've got the Sinclair type Kempston 2 you've got some Mega Drive um, configuration pads there 3 or 6 button and you've also got key joy um, so you can map keys from the keyboard directly to your joystick. So we'll keep that at Kempston 1. And as it says there on screen, not used by the next ZX RS. Due to reports. And we'll just put the next back up. Now for options within the OS, we can press the yellow NMI button. 
for those you're in a my button there. Go down to settings, joysticks, and there you can configure different joystick types within the next OS. And you've also got the key joy left and right setting for each port also. So let's try out the Quickshot 2 pad. Load up Night Night again. I was never a, a massive fan of these type of uh, joysticks. But again, this game plays really well, even with Quickshot 2 type of joystick, if that's uh, your preference. Yeah, no issues at all with that. And obviously this uh, particular model, you've got an auto fire option on there as well. Now the only issue with this type of joystick is even though there's two fire buttons on there, they are mapped to the same button. So any game um, with two buttons, you're going to struggle. So keep that in mind. But yeah, works really well. So let's try now Zipstick. Put that into joy point one. This is one of my favorite uh, joysticks. And again, works absolutely perfect for this type of game super responsive so this uh, this game night night was free for ks2 owners but it's now available uh, for everybody else KS1 owners and go owners on the uh, on the website and you can get get all the physical edition so yeah zipstick fantastic but again so both buttons are mapped exactly the same to so keep that in mind so let's just go a little bit more modern now now I like to use the 8-bit dough device and I'll put the links in the description below um, if you want to get hold of one of these there's no configuration necessary just plug it in switch on your next and then it's just a matter of pairing your pad so we'll pair the playstation pad now so to pair this it's a matter of holding your finger on the little blue button until that flashes so to pair the playstation pad hold down the share button and then the playstation button and then we'll wait for the intermittent flash and then we'll get the static light there which indicates we've connected and now the uh, flashing light on the ABDO device has also gone to a static blue light so that's connected we're ready to rock so now we'll try the flash pad This is definitely my part of choice for the for the next if you can get all the one so yeah that works absolutely perfect no issues at all with the uh, PlayStation 4 pad so now we'll try the Xbox S pad 
And again, we need to press the blue button on the 8 bit Doe device to set it to pairing mode. And then on the Xbox pad, we've got a pair option there which we can hold. Turn the pad on. As soon as that goes static, we've connected. So let's try out a multiple button game. So if you go, if we go down to um, games, next, and we'll load up TX1696 demo. Now this game uses multiple buttons, which is ideal for a pad. Like the Meg Drive pad, PlayStation and the Xbox pad. So on this game we've got normal shot fire and you can also charge, charge up your record. And then we've got button B, which brings up the weapons wheel, if you like. On the demo, you can only choose between uh, two items, speed up and circle fire. So we'll select that. Ship tends to be quite slow to start off with. And we'll pick up some speed. So you've got start button which brings up pause. So it's ideal to have a pad for a multi-button game. That plays absolutely perfect on that pad. So now let's try the Nintendo Wiimote. So I'm going to use it as a pad on its own and then I'm going to connect the arcade stick and see how that works. So pairing with Wiimote again on the 8-bit Do device holding the blue button so you get the blue flashing light. If you take the the cover off the Wiimote and you got a little red button there just press that and it automatically pairs straight away for you nice and simple and obviously because we're using it as a pad we need to use it in the horizontal position one thing I will say also is you can use any of the joysticks and any of the pads to control the menus on the next. So again, we'll try TX1696. And again, plays perfectly fine using the Wii Mode. So now, let's try this arcade board. And what we need to do is simply connect the arcade board to the Wiimote while it's paired. Plug that in. And now we should have a working arcade board.
really gives you that arcade feel. So the last thing I want to show you is this cable, this PS2 splitter cable, which I've got a Spectrum PS2 mouse connected and a PS2 keyboard. And that simply fits in the back of your Speccy next next to the PGA connector. It is quite tight, so just be careful when you're connecting that up. So you might think to yourself, well, what's the point in connecting a PS2 keyboard when I've got the lovely um, Spectrum Next keyboard to play on? So you can play on that keyboard, obviously. But depending on desk space and your configuration, and if you do want to keep your Spectrum Next keyboard nice and clean, you can connect your PS2 keyboard. It's also useful if you've got a Engo. If you don't want to use the Engo case that you can get, or if, like myself, you've put the and go into a plus keyboard which is okay but not great so that's where the ps2 keyboard comes in handy so we'll choose a game we can play keyboard warhawk Control method, if you like, is the Spectrum PS2 mouse. So let's have a look what we can use the mouse for. So what uses the mouse at the moment? So if we go into the browser, under games and then next, so far, regarding the mouse, we have the next wall. And we can select mouse in those options. So there you go, you got your, your mouse pointer there. There's some mouse testing software make sure everything's working so another game that uses the mouse is Red Ark's Revenge
Alien Annihilation, which is like Missile Command. And this was wrote in uh, BASIC by Kevman 3 d Awesome little game. We've also got some programs like Next Door. So that's it for another video hope you enjoyed it don't forget to hit the uh, subscribe button i'm trying to get to a thousand that'd be awesome if i could don't worry if uh, you don't want to it does help and don't forget to like this video and leave some comments below and i'll see you next time thanks for watching Ta -ra!